warm welcome to what's in this week's open times with me finn nixon me kathy griffiths and me sandy neal as always we have lots of interesting news and photographs for you in our newspaper and at www.obentimes.co.uk and remember that here at the open times we love to hear your stories and see your photographs as well you can call us on 01 631 568000 email editor at obentimes.co.uk or drop us a message on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. What have you been reporting on this week though, Cathy? Well, Hope Kitchen is rolling out the red carpet for a film premiere all about itself. The short film, Nourish to Flourish, is being screened to get word out that the Soraba Road-based charity is much more than just a kitchen. The movie is a celebration of the people who come together to create the whole Hope community. Shot by Eyeglass, now that's an arts and filmmaking um, community interest company, the film will have its first screening at the Corrin Halls on Saturday, September the 16th. The event includes includes a hot meal, cake, drinks and the chance to take part in a quiz night. There you go. For teams of six people, I'm sure you can all muster that. Tickets are £10 and you can buy them from Hope Kitchen and all the proceeds are going to go back into the charity's funding pot. More drone trials later this year could be sky's the limit for Argyll and Butte Council, we've been hearing. The test runs will explore a number of potential services, including delivery operations for cargo, surveying and surveillance of infrastructure, help with ongoing maintenance of roads and bridges and monitoring of marine and agricultural environments. The council is also going to keep working with other interested stakeholders to develop using drones even more to deliver essential items, including medical equipment, test results and mail. Oh, we all love to get a letter, don't we? Delivering school meals by drones has already won national recognition for the council. And I've had a grand time covering up in show. We've got lots of photos from the big day in the paper and online. And we all know that that show has the reputation of being one of the biggest in Argyle. And even though the sun didn't quite come out, we all had a fabulous time. And I've got to give a shout out here to Alistair Campbell from Ling, who fast paced the show's hill race in wait for it just over 22 minutes now that's a distance of 4.16 kilometers and it's a heck of a steep hill and he broke the record by about five minutes so well done alistair thank you very much kathy well peninsular homes and businesses hit by the failure of the corn ferry across loch linney are finally getting a visit from the scottish government's transport minister this week after repeated calls for many months Facing criticism over a lack of communication and an action plan, the Corran Ferries operator Highland Council said sorry last Thursday. Council leaders hope they can now see light at the end of the tunnel. We have a shortage of staff in the Highlands and Islands, but what is to blame? Is it Brexit? We put a UK Minister for Scotland on the spot in our Invest in the West campaign. Former high school and Rockville primary pupil Hugh Carden has become the oldest person to row the mid-Pacific Ocean at the age of 63. Wow! Oban's Rockfield Centre has been gifted a parcel of land in their back garden. But what will it be used for? Plus, we've got a roundup of the Kalin Show. Finn, what have you got for us? Thank you very much, Sandy. And this week I've been reporting on the closure of the mobile postal service at Dalmally, meaning much longer trips for local residents to Lockall, Tainult, or even the newly opened full-time branch at Inverary, located 16 miles from Dalmally. In the Western Isles, concerns have been raised about the early introduction of a winter schedule for Benbecula to Glasgow flights, with the local authority calling for a public service obligation to be introduced And some non-teaching school staff in the Western Isles are set to take strike action in September. Malig and Oban RNLI teams have also been kept busy recently with call-outs to kayakers and a yacht in distress, with these stories available to read at www.obentimes.co.uk. In the sport, we have a full report from Oban Kamenak's fantastic win in the Artemis Macaulay Cup final as they triumphed against Kingusi to win the competition for the first time since 1995. We also have our usual detailed Shinty Roundup, and we report on Lewis West's latest success, with the eight-year-old from Dunbeg bringing home three medals from the World Dwarf Games in Germany. Elsewhere, I heard from a former Easdale Primary School pupil who is in training for one of the world's toughest sailing events, the Clipper Round the World race. 
We also had the latest from Bob McIntyre, with the Oban golfer still in the mix for a Ryder Cup place, after missing the cut in the SBS Handa World Invitational in Northern Ireland last weekend. And Oban Lauren ladies kick-started their rugby season by giving several deputants their first start in a pulsating defeat at West of Scotland. And remember, you can read all of these stories we have mentioned and more at www.obentimes.co.uk or by picking up a newspaper in local shops and petrol stations. And don't forget, if you have a story, get in touch. You can call us on 01 631 568 email editor at obentimes.co.uk or message us on one of our social media platforms. That's it from us this week, though. So it's goodbye from me, Finn Nixon. Goodbye from me, Kathy Griffiths. And goodbye from me, Sandy Neal. Bye. Bye-bye.